Hello, wonderful people. This video is for all of the gentlemen out there as well as the ladies who care about them. Um, I'm going to be reading from my notes, so bear with me um, in that process. Dr. Pamela Popper was part of the Forks Over Knives documentary uh, back in, I guess, 2011 that came out. I consider her analysis of research to be credible and would encourage you to watch her video uh, from April 11th, 2019 entitled, Why PSA Testing is a Bad Idea. Um, I'll, I'll include the link to that video in the video description. Uh, her conclusion, PSA is a protein not a marker for cancer. The risk of being harmed as a result of having the PSA test is 30 times higher than the chance the man will benefit. Think about that. That was her conclusion based on her research on PSA testing. Um, Dr. Popper knows Dr. Richard Ablin personally, that's A-B-L-I-N. Dr. Ablin discovered PSA. Um, he says a PSA of 4.0 being suspicious is a random number and PSA is slightly better than a coin toss for predicting prostate cancer. Worth noting, drug and device makers pay hundreds of millions of dollars per year to the FDA, which does represent a conflict of interest. Um, personally, I've seen enough that I am highly skeptical of the USDA as well as the FDA. Dr. Albin said that PSA was originally intended to only be used for surveillance of men who had already been diagnosed or through prostate cancer. Uh, on the topic of biopsies, biopsies are painful and can cause blood in the urine and stool. Uh, they can be life-threatening. Uh, urologists, in my experience, don't tend to talk about that part. Um, infection is possible. Antibi antibiotics are part of the prostate biopsy process. Um, anti biotic resistant bacterial infection, biopsy needle drags, can put bowel bacteria into the prostate. So think about that. Now, not only does a biopsy interrupt or move potential cancer cells around, uh, um, but the procedure itself can infect the prostate and it can be deadly. I believe that prostate biopsies involve 12 to 18 needle sticks into the prostate. So there might be a really good question uh, for your doctor, surgeon, etc. What is the risk of the biopsy procedure itself spreading cancer or bacteria? Pam's research notes that nearly all men develop prostate cancer as they age, and almost all of them will die with their prostate cancer, not from the prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is often overdiagnosed. Worth noting, uh, many years ago, Dr. John McDougall who's a prolific author and also one of the doctors involved with the documentary Forks Over Knives, uh, he noted that by age 80, 98% of men have some level of prostate cancer. That was part of my decision for going onto a 100% plant-fueled nutrition plan nearly 12 years ago. Worth noting, PSA test use has added billions of dollars in costs 
to the U.S. healthcare system. She believes risk of harm outweighs the benefit. While not wanting to sound like a conspiracy theorist, it's um, a good idea to follow the money. Dr. Peter Bach, B-A-C-H, a medical doctor with the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, said in 2009 that there was a one in 50 chance of being saved in 10 years from prostate cancer that would have killed a man versus a 49 in 50 chance of being treated unnecessarily. Men have a 3% risk of dying from prostate cancer, which implies 97% of men are more likely to be harmed by treatment. So maybe I'm um, saying the same thing over again, or it, it, maybe it's just too obvious, but the prostate biopsy is risky, probably riskier than we realize, and it may spread cancer on top of that basic risk of infection. A biopsy then could kill a man who doesn't even have prostate cancer. More recent research, which prompted Dr. Popper's video in 2019, shows that men aged 55 to 69 were screened for 10 to 15 years. 1,000 men got a PSA test. 240 were positive. 100 of them got a biopsy. 20 to to 59% of these biopsy cases will involve prostate cancer that will not grow, spread, and be fatal to the man. But 80% will elect to have treatment and 60% will have serious complications. All that so that three of the original 1,000 avoid metastatic disease, and one to two men avoid death from prostate cancer. Side effects from prostate cancer treatment do include incontinence and impotence. These are major quality of life issues. While I've not checked uh, Pam's algebra, uh, math, uh, but her conclusion is that the risk of harm to men is at least 30 times higher than the odds of benefiting. Of interest to me is that newer studies show that exercise, travel, and even dietary supplements can increase PSA levels. Dr. Popper also noted that PSA testing is not accurate, which I think I've made that clear, and the PSA threshold is an arbitrary number. Um, I'm not a pro medical professional, but do question whether I'm exercising too much. Uh, currently, I'm trimming body fat and transitioning from an all plant-based diet to the same diet with uh, less carbohydrate, um, more whole foods, less processed sugar. Um, I use some nutraceuticals, dried mushrooms, tart cherry extract, neem powder, N-E-E-M, um, some vitamins, uh, and many more things that I'm doing. Dr. Popper's general conclusion that I happen to agree with is that good lifestyle habits are best and that men who are asymptomatic should avoid the PSA test. I've already, of course, had the PSA test uh, numerous times, trying to see if I can lower that level uh, naturally. Um, but for me, the big question is uh, um, the biopsy and that risk. Personally, I have some enlargement of the prostate, uh, which was before the dietary changes uh, um, that I made. The big change was moving to a 100% plant-based diet December 10th of 2010. Um, and I had thyroid cancer in 2004. Due to my history, I'll probably keep getting the PSA test 
um, while continuing to do things to, to lower the PSA level. It seems clear to me that it's probably best if we develop healthy habits to mitigate the risk of prostate cancer way before we turn 50 or 60. And finally, Dr. Pam, if you happen to see this video, I'd love to see you update us on this topic, uh, what's in the pipeline um, for diagnosis and better treatment options in the future. One last topic, uh, I'm rereading uh, a book called Radical Remission by Kelly Turner. She is the best-selling author of a book that came out, I believe in 14, called Radical Remission. And um, Radical Hope is about the 10 things that cancer survivors, late stage cancer survivors, did to heal their cancer, or largely, um, I mean, these are holistic natural things. So some of the uh, patients use traditional um, modern medicine in combination with those 10 things. Uh, but regardless, this book is excellent for giving you some confidence in the power of our bodies to heal themselves. It really comes down to focusing on ease versus disease, 